Willie D Live. It's Willie D, y'all. Back with another episode of information and instructions to help you navigate through this wild, crazy, beautiful world. In the studio. See, normally I, I clap after I announce the name. But man, I'm so excited, bro. <laughs> I had to start clapping for, say, man, this is the guy right here. Ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Kane is in the building. Yes, sir. Say, man, thank you, man. Thank you for coming. Man, I know you, you're on a tight schedule, and so I really do appreciate you taking time to stop by, man, and chop it up with me. Nah, come on, man. You a brother, man. I got lo- so much respect and love for man, you know, so it's an honor to chop it up with you, man. You appreciate know? it, man. Man, let's pick up where we left off yesterday. We were having a conversation about the Grammys. And, you know, you know I wasn't there for, uh-huh. for various reasons. You know I wasn't there. And, you know, they had they celebrated the 50th anniversary of hip-hop, mm-hmm. a house that I helped build. And, you know, so you know I wasn't there, but what I want to know is, why wasn't you that? Because you helped build that house too. Um, well, I wasn't asked until the very last minute. And then when I was asked, it wasn't even by the people um, that was actually putting the talent together. It was by someone else that, um, you know, has a relationship with, you know, the people that run BET. Right. But um, I don't know. I mean, I guess, you know, because of the amount of artists throughout the years, they could only, you know, fit so many in in an 11 minute segment where some people had to get left out. Some people had to be sacrificed, you know, and I'm assuming that I was one that was one or the other, you know. But, you know, um, at the end of the day, man, I'm just I'm glad that. It was successful, and everybody was talking about it and, you know, loved the way that it went. Would I have loved to have been part of it? Absolutely. But still, I'm just happy for everyone else that, you know, that did their thing, man. You know, and it is what it is. You know what, man? God going to bless you because I don't feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like, fuck the Grammys. You know, like, you know, I, I should have been there. You know, you know they should have made went out of their way to make sure I was there. They should have went out of their way to make sure you were there. They should have went out of their way to make sure that they pay proper homage to this thing, the, the number one genre of music in the game right now. You can say what you want to say about hip-hop, but we number one. Oh, and, no, and, by all means. And you, and you thought we was going to be a flash in the night. You thought it was going to last, you know, a couple mm-hmm. of years. And then you say, well, 10 years max. And then you oh, yeah. like, you look up now, and we're 50 years in. And not only 50 years in, every other genre is incorporating hip-hop into their music. Exactly. You know? Even country music. Show you right, yeah. 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 Man. Yeah. By all means. You know, I mean, you know, like I said, man, <laughs> you know, it is what it is, man. You know, like, there's uh, so many people like, um, like there was, all, I think, a thing on Billboard where they did the top 50 MCs or top 20 MCs. I can't remember what it was, top something. And there was a lot of people upset about the way that they had people placed, you know, at this number or this person right. being left off. And I mean, you know, in all honesty, I don't, I've never in my life, made a song for Billboard magazine. I've never in my life made a song for the Grammys. I've never in my life even made a song for the Soul Train huh. Awards. Huh. You know what I'm saying? So, um... Who you made the song for? I made the song for the fans, for the people. Damn. So when someone come up to me and say Damn. that my music got them through high school, got them through college, got them through Desert Storm, um, huh. helped them get married. Come on, man. You know, that's when I feel like, now, that's when I feel like I've done my job. I, it doesn't matter to me if someone says I'm number one in a magazine or says I'm number 25. That don't even matter. That's just their opinion. What matters is, you know, the fans that, you know, um, that my music meant something to. Well, you answered the question for me because I was going to ask you, what do you think about them putting you at 25? I mean, like that's their that. opinion. That, that's just their opinion, right? I mean, you ask me, like, you know, some of my favorite magazines, I'll be done rolled off um, right on, word up, um, rap um, rap masters and all types of stuff before I even mention Billboard. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, and I doubt that they care. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, right. so, I mean, it is what it is, man, until it ain't what it ain't, man. Well, at know? least you was on the list, man. 
At least you was on the list. I wasn't even on the list, and you know, which is strange to me since uh, you know so many people claim to love the Ghetto Boys, and you know, Ghetto Boys is top five, top ten all times. And you know, since I wrote the majority of the lyrics, you know, I'm just wondering like why I'm not never on that list. But fuck all y'all. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. I want to keep this positive because you're a positive brother, man. You, you know got, what I've always you loved about you, man? Your voice, yeah. man. Like, I've I've always felt that your voice was so important in the Ghetto Boys. You know, um, you know, I, I, I love you know faces, bars, and stuff, but your voice is just so so damn captivating, man. You know, it's like it, King. like I mean, like I can sit and listen to some stuff that you know um, that face spit. You know, um, I love um, um, Bushwick verse on mine playing tricks on me you know i don't know if, if that's your pen or not you know but i mean you know but i mean um with Brad, you though Brad pen that one oh okay, Brad, okay. Him, yeah but with you my dude man i don't think i go a week i don't yeah i don't think i make it through a week without just some somewhere walking through the house i'm just going you know i live by the swole that's just my shit. Right, right. that's my shit man you know <laughs> i mean your voice is yeah, like yeah man you have such a powerful voice man and i mean it's and the crazy thing is like um you look at ugk and it's like I feel like I see the same formula. My guys, yeah. you know what I'm saying. I feel Pimp like C, you know, uh, uh, yeah. Bun is face and Pimp C is you. You know, it's like because like your voice is just like you know. No, you gonna listen. You yeah. gonna listen to what the hell I got to say, man. Your voice is amazing, brother. You yeah, know, I appreciate it, man. You know, I was uh, the trip part about it is that I studied Chuck D. I studied Chuck D. Mm. I studied LL. I studied Ice Cube. And if you listen closely, you can hear a little bit in them of them. I can hear the Chuck now that you mentioned. I never thought yeah. about it, but now yeah. that you mention it, I, I can I can hear it. Yeah. And then with 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 Chuck also, like Chuck's stage presence, the way he moved on stage, that was my thing. Like I was like, I wanna have that type of energy mm. on stage. Chuck be over here, then you boop. <laughs> he over here, he over here, man. Yeah, throwing fists and, and kicks. And still going, yeah, yeah man. I was like, yeah. I, I used to love that. I was like, man, that's how I want to be, how I want to perform. Nah, but y'all, y'all, and y'all, y'all, y'all perform your asses off, man. You remember, you remember the first time coming to Apollo? I do. I absolutely know. The remember. walls were sweating, man. Y'all yeah. tore that shit. Yeah. Down. Yeah. I remember. Yeah, man. The walls were sweating that night. Yeah. 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 Man, let's let's since we're in New York, let's stay in New York for a moment. Let's revisit a young Antonio Hardy. Mm -hmm. You're in Brooklyn. What do you see like growing up? You 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 grew up in Brooklyn, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and what what's that household like you growing up? Uh, as far as back as you can remember. Well, the household was magnificent, man. I grew up in a beautiful household, you know. Um, my mother started off working at a supermarket called Sloan's, which was kind of like um, the 70s version of Whole Food, you know. Um, and then she became a registered nurse. And my pops was a truck driver. And I grew up in a household with both of my parents. You know, I wasn't from no broken home. You know, it was me, my mom's pops, and my little brother Shane, you mm -hmm. know. Um, in an apartment, you know, um, but I mean, you know, we and we was in the hood. We was in Best Eye. We was in the hood. But you know, it was like my, my pops had the um, dark blue and light blue Seville. My mom's had the brown and beige Seville. They had like the matching. Man, y'all had two cars. Matching humpback Seville. Y'all was Seville. rich. <laughs> yeah, hood rich, right? Man. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know, yeah, that's how I grew up. But I mean, you know, I I, I ran with you know. Um, like, you know, all the street cats, you know, I call them, um, when people used to hear me shout those names out on the songs, those was the cats that, you know, that I was running with in high school, you know, Hawk, you know, Dog, Big Hawk, Dog, Big Shy, you know, Miami, all these cats, I was, you know, those, those was the dudes I hung out with the Albie Square Mall with, and that's who I was running with back then. Yeah. You know? But what, what type of life lessons did your mom teach you and... What type of life lessons did your dad teach you? I want to know this because you are a 
unique individual. Like everybody is unique, but you're a different type of unique. You got a calm demeanor. You got a good spirit. If you look back at your legacy, your history, your career, you haven't heard any scandalous stuff about uh, Big Daddy Kane, right? You don't hear these rumors about he did this, he did this. You don't hear all of that kind of stuff. Like, you just ain't look deep enough. I ain't, I'm not looking deep enough. Okay. Well, okay. I'm gonna look. I'm, I'm gonna look a little deeper. But but what what I'm saying is overall, what I'm saying is you know perhaps that stuff out there, right? Because ain't none of us perfect. Yeah. But the thing is, is that you don't come across as that type of guy no, that, that that that's that's always that's looking for trouble. You no, don't I'm come across the guy. I mean, you don't come across a guy as a guy that, with bad energy. You got a good spirit about yourself. That's what I'm really what I'm trying to say, and I'm trying to get to where did that come from? No, I can take it, man. I mean, I, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't want no drama, man. I just want to be happy, man, and enjoy life. That's all I want. And um, people that know me, even from back then, you know, that's what they'll say that I try to, you know, bring to their life. You know, because I go on tour, you know, I come back to the hood and snatch dudes from the hood and get them jobs on the road. Here, you can carry the clothes. You know, you can be security, you know. Um, yeah, uh, You can um, help bring the cows on cases for Mr. C. You know, like, you know, try to, you know, give them jobs so they get a chance to see different places, different states, travel, hotels, you know, see around the world and get out the hood. You know, I, I mean, I, I tried to, you know, make it possible for other cats to see what I was seeing, mm -hmm. you know. So, I mean, that's the type of person I am. And um, I think I, I think I get that, you know, from uh, my family, you know, because it's like, you know, like. My pops, you know, he first started driving for North American Van Line. So, you know, lots of times we we ride cross country. You know, my my brother wasn't born at the time, but it's like, you know, my my pops there, my mom's, you know, shotgun and that little sleeper thing that's in right behind the seats. You talking I, about the big trucks? Yeah, the big eighteen wheelers. Yeah. yeah, you know, like in in the, um, the front part, you know, that yeah. little sleeper thing. Yeah. yeah, I'll be back. That's where I'm at. Back yeah. there, you know, snacking on food, you know, watching them ride and talk to one another, you know, stuff like that, you know. Um, so, I mean, you know, I come from, where, you know, a good family un unit, you know, and um, and things get tight, you know, they 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 hustle, you know, like, like you know, the bills get tight, man, you know, my mom, my moms would go out and sell some, 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 some fake Gucci belts and fake Louis belts and stuff like that. My pops had his man that used to get the hookup with the Pierre Cardin shoes and he'd go sell them for, you know, get them from him for a cheap price and sell them for a higher price, you know, stuff like that to, to the cats that he knew and hang, hung out at the clubs with, right. you know? So, I mean, you know, this is the type of stuff I saw growing up and, that hustle mentality was in me and then that, you know, um, just being together, looking out for one another, that that was in me as well, you know. So it's like, you know, we rocking, we family. We rocking, we family, and we're going to move like family. We're going to move on one accord, you dig? Right. Mm -hmm. What single, or well, I guess I don't know, it doesn't have to be single, but what's, what's one of the most important lessons that you learned from your mother? One of the most important lessons I learned um, from my mother, I would probably would say would be to like, you know, you know, be courteous to people. It's like she was the type of person that could, you know, see that you, you know, you, you got real foul traits and she would still, you know, be nice to you. She watching your movements, but she would still be nice to you, you know. She was mm. like that's 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 something that you know um, she was real big on, you know, like you know, and I mean she she might come home and 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 you know bark about it, you know, like I cannot believe such and such and such gonna talk to me, gonna ask me, you know, but you know dealing with it, you know, she's not gonna let you see that it it fazed her at all, you know, that's the way she was, you know. And what about your pops? <laughs> My pops was something completely different. <laughs> yeah, my pops. Yeah, he he be ready to fight the heartbeat. He spazzed out over over the smallest thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ever yeah. Saw, you ever seen him fight? Um, yeah. Um, actually, um, uh, I had a fight on tour one time with another um rap group, and my pops was in the middle of the fight, fighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen him fight. 
And I remember one, one time when I was a kid, he was a kid. He was arguing with somebody, and I, I seen him snatch the axe out the fireman's host, holster because mm-hmm. that apartment building that my grandmother lived in had caught on fire. And my pops was, you know, barking on the dude about leaving the kids at home. And the dude said something to my pops, and he just snatched the axe out the um, fireman's holster and went at him. Like, all these firemen had to jump on him, to, you know, to bring him down because he, you know, was on some Jason shit. <laughs> yeah. So this this crew that you was you was fighting this wasn't Boogie Down Production, was it? <laughs> no, no, no. You know, um, <laughs> I'm messing with you, man. Uh, you know, you know, I gotta ask you about Boogie Down Productions and Juice Crew. You know, well, that, I mean, that's you legendary. know, I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, <clears throat> that was really um, uh, a Shan, Marley, and Mister Magic thing. And all y'all just got caught up in it. Well, we was Juice Crew. Yeah, but um. It was like, Karis, he never dissed me, he never dissed Biz, he never dissed G-Rap. Um, he, he, he mentioned Marley, Shan, and Shantae. Um, I was in the studio with Chris when he did Dope Beat. I was in the studio with Chris when he did Poetry. Um, Karis helped, helped Karis when his first wife, Miss Melody, they helped me move out of, move out of my mother's crib. Huh. Yeah, yeah. They helped me move out. I remember it like it was yesterday. Me and Karis carrying his gray couch down the stairs. Miss Melody had the big 25-inch TV, and her cousin had the VCR. And we went and moved to an apartment in um, Canarsie and hooked everything up and sat and drunk a six-pack of Heineken and watched The Color Purple. Did MC, did MC Shan and Marley Marl, like, take exception, exception to you guys not wanting to be involved in the beef with Shan Shan never said nothing about it like um it seemed like Shan you know didn't really care like you know, like like you know like you know I don't like Shan Shan I think was more or less like I don't need Kane help I I I can handle KRS you know I don't think Shan cared um and M- Mr. Magic was the one who was upset with me uh-huh. He 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 called me a Benedict Arnold on 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 the on the radio station live on the air. Uh-huh. Said the Big Daddy Kane's a Benedict Arnold and he should be beheaded on sight. Wow. <laughs> Did y'all yeah. patch it up before he passed? Yeah 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Yeah. yeah, that's good, man. What, what's up with tragedy, man? I hadn't heard anything from a um, uh, tragedy or uh, tragedy. Cra- um, I I hear from him from time to time. Um, uh. Like from time to time, I hear from tragedy. You talk. I think my brother talks to him more though, um, but he, he's around. He's around. He, he's still doing his thing. He's still performing and stuff. What yeah. about Craig G? Oh, Craig is doing his thing. Craig is yeah. good. <laughs> I talk to Craig every once in a while. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, me and um, me and Ace, we probably talk the most. Me and Master Ace probably talk the most. Right. Um, I talk to Craig from time to time. Um, Shan will call me at least twice a year and curse my ass out about something. Um, and me and Shantae, we talk. We talk. Yeah. Me and Shantae. Shantae like little sister. Do you watch uh, Shan's uh, videos on YouTube with his kids? <laughs> Sometimes. I mean, <laughs> you Shout know. Shout out to MC Shan, Shan, man. Shan a special one, man. I, I, but I love I love that brother, man. You know, I mean, you know, we didn't get along. We didn't get along when I first got down, and 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 that actually bothered me because, you know, I was a battle rapper, and any time I battled in a nightclub, I always battled rappers using the beat to the bridge, so Mm. to know that I'm actually going to be in the same label with this dude, you know, I was excited about that, and you know, I, I now I'm part of. The label and Shan, he referred to me as the new nigga, and I, I wasn't digging that, you know. But um, we eventually, we eventually got cool, and and yeah, I mean, I, I love Shan, I love watching Shan, be Shan, curse people out, complain about every goddamn thing. I, it's entertaining to me, man. You know, it's enter- like sometimes there's been times. If you look at my Instagram page, there's been times where Shan go on and curse me out about something or Kane wasn't a part of this. Y'all don't know this, but Kane and I repost the shit. You know? You know? I don't get mad. I just go repost it like on my page. Yeah. Man, how did that photo shoot come about with Madonna? Uh the Madonna thing, um, Warner Brothers has set up this promotional tour for me, Madonna, and Color Me Bad. 
but we were only going to like like high end hospitals. Like we were going to hospitals to talk to children, you know, that was there sick. But they were like, you know, we're rich kids were in the hospital, you know? So majority of patients, you know, were young white kids. They didn't know who the hell I was, you know. And um they knew, they knew who Madonna me bad. was. They knew who Madonna was, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. And then Madonna's going up to the kids, so like, and that's Big Daddy Kane, he's a famous rapper. Here, let me hear you say ain't no half. And I'm standing, oh, Madonna know my shit. Huh. I'm, I'm like, wow. You know, because she's like a big yeah, pop yeah. legend, you know. Yeah. And after we um we finished that day, you know, at the hospitals, you know, I just went up to her and I was like, yo, thank you so much, you know, for acknowledging me and, you know, introducing me to the kids. And yeah, I really appreciate that, you know. And and she was like, no, nah, no problem. You know, it's nice to meet you. And then she said, I'm doing a, a book. I would like to have you in it, you know, taking photos. I'm like, I would love to be a part of it. Now, yeah. at, at this time, are you feeling like are you feeling like a superstar at this time already? Because you know you was jamming. Yeah, I mean, no, I f- I felt like a superstar. Okay, but I mean, I still acknowledge pop royalty. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I I knew Madonna's value. So, you know what I'm saying? So did you feel when she asked? Did you feel like you know you were already in the club? You know the in, the, the, the the click. You know the big click. You know Madonna and all these nah, other people. Nah, nah. I yeah. mean, because that was that was a whole nother level. Right. You know. I mean. You know. I felt like I was um probably you know um the level of um like you know uh, LL Cool J, Beastie Boys, uh, MC Hammer. You know. I felt like I was there. But you know, then there's that other level. There's the so you treat ma- so you basically treating. Hip hop, like them outsiders, be treating us, looking like, down on us, like we ain't all that. No, 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 no. Because you got to understand, and I mean, now you stop me when I'm lying. At that point in time, you know, we getting like you know, um, twenty five, thirty thousand a night she to perform. Half a million, a million. Huh? She getting a million. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So it's that's that's a whole different level. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I knew you, I knew what you were saying when I first said it. I just wanted to start some shit. <laughs> oh, well, good luck with that, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So, so she said, "I want you to do the book." Now what? I said I would be honored, and then she was like, "Well, it's gonna mainly be nude photos." I was like, "Well, shit, even better," and we made it happen. You said it like that, just even better. Yeah, nude I was photos. like, well, "Shit, you even better." Had you ever thought about doing new photos before that? Like, no. publicly? Wait, wait, yeah. I think I did I think I did Playgirl magazine. You had already did yeah, the I think Playgirl, I did Playgirl magazine. magazine? Yeah, I think I did Playgirl magazine before um I did the Madonna book. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Man. I think. I mean I could be wrong, I, I, but I think Playgirl came before the Madonna book. The Madonna book had a whole lot of freaky stuff going on. Yeah. Uh you were one of the main freaky people in the in the book. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Look, man, you in the book, dog. You like you you're kissing Naomi Campbell, one of the most beautiful women in the world, and you got your finger inside of Madonna. Like, dude, what are you thinking? Like, did they tell you that I, she had to invite you to that? She had to tell you to go in, stick it in. But like, how did that? <laughs> How did, how did that actual shoot come about? That, that, that well, let photo. me explain the very first thing that happened. Yeah. As soon as I walked in the door, Madonna ran up to me butt-ass naked and jumped on me like that and hugged me. Kane. This is at a house? No, at the photo shoot where we was. What? Yeah, she, Kane, glad you're here. Yo, let me tell you, I was just standing in the middle of the highway just like this with nothing on with my thumb out while they're taking pictures. Nobody stopped. Not one fucking car stopped. Madonna, nobody stopped for me. Do you believe that? <laughs> that's how that's how the whole photo shoot started. So right there I knew, okay, this one of them days, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just rolling with whatever. Did you have anything to drink or smoke? Nah, 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 nah. So you just you just going off off sheer energy, like yeah, I mean, energy. I'm like, okay, this is going to be one of, like, it's, because I mean, <laughs> come on, man. I mean, that you know. That was a wild you, photo shoot, bro. How many, no, I'm, I'm thinking, how many wild nights you've had in a hotel room? So it, it ain't nothing new. Yeah. Only thing was new was that I'm doing it 
with I a mega it. star and a supermodel. But for, I mean, other for, than that, I've did, for an international publication. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, honestly, I don't even think I even thought that far. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It was just like you know, yo, this is fucking Madonna, man. How did the how did the shot of you kissing Naomi and having your finger embedded in Madonna happen? Like, who who called that shot? I think and we was, was just, nah, I think yeah, I was we just were, messing around, and they just we kept were shooting. feeling each other around and whatnot, and I, I you know, I, I, I think she might have touched, you know, touched me first. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, I'm, oh, that's what it is? Okay. You yeah. know, and, and then, you know, I just participated. It's a dude, just, one of those, like, and then he took the best one. You know, he, or at yeah. least he took the one that he thought was the best yeah. one. <laughs> Man, I was like, wow. This is wow right here. Now, have you spoken to Madonna after that? Like any time after that? Um, yeah, we spoke um, one time. I, I, I rhymed on one of her remixes. We spoke. Um, like Madonna, like, you know, the Madonna that I know, you know, I don't know what's going on right now if I haven't seen in years, but the Madonna that I know was like super down to earth, fun person to be around didn't care about no other, you know, like, whatever, like, this is us, we having fun. Like, you know, she was, like, mad cool, man. She was mad cool, the Madonna that I met, the Madonna that I know. You she know? was a free spirit. She's a yeah. free spirit, like yourself. Best way to put it. Like yourself. You, put it. Do you consider yourself a free spirit? Not like her ass. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, I, I mean, I just think, you know, I'm, you know, I'm just me. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I, I, um... I, I I like to see everyone feel special, so I try my best to you know I don't I don't like for people to feel like they have to be starstruck or treat me like a celebrity. So I try to talk to everybody on, on where we, we're dealing on the same level. That's the type of person I am, you know. Yeah. How did the Playgirl photo shoot come about? Where where you are? Gene Shelton. <laughs> Head of publicity at Warner Brothers. He had just got me in Essence magazine. It was like he was trying to get me in Jet magazine, and he was having a hard time. And then whoever it was that uh, I guess was running Jet, he sent them some flowers or chocolate, something, and sent it like it was from me. And we ended up getting in Jet. And then we got in the Essence and... Um, uh, and did like a, a whole nice photo shoot, and Gene was just we was just making a joke, you know. One night we was sitting there drinking and talking about, <laughs> he's like, "Young blood, I got you," and so many that I n magazines I never thought I could get a rap artist into. Man, we've been getting. He's like, "Shit, there's nothing left, you know, <laughs> not unless we're gonna do Playgirl or something." I was like, "Shit, let's do it." That's how it came about. And then comes the iconic. Lasciviously posed Big Daddy Kane with some a box of chocolates. <laughs> Yo, have you seen the memes? <laughs> no. The memes are the best. Yeah. Yeah. Like I ain't gonna lie. You know, I mean, because I can take a joke. I, <laughs> I I I used to sit and pray that it could get to the level of the Jordan meme. Really? Yeah, man. Because, like, um. I saw one with me sitting there eating the chocolate, and and it, and it said, you know, um, um, when you come to her house on Valentine's, but she on a monthly. Yeah. <laughs> it was just me sitting there eating the chocolate by myself. Yeah. I, like the memes was hilarious, man. Yeah. The memes had me crying, man. Oh man. That's, yeah, man. That is crazy, man. Now, did you lose any street cred? Absolutely. After you did that. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. What do you remember? What What, what do you remember the climate being? Like? Um. You know, a lot of people, you know, um, didn't like it. Um, you know, a lot of people, you know, didn't like it um, because, uh, you know, well, for one, you know, dudes is pissed because I'm nude. Um, you know, uh, um, and then with the Madonna thing, you know, a lot of people's upset because she's white. Um, you know, um, it, you know, it was that type of thing. Like, this ain't hip hop. This ain't hip hop. You know. 
But, you know, I mean, it's like, you know, hip-hop just wasn't ready for it then. Because all that shit legal now. All that's fair game right now. But do you think, like, uh, an alpha male that's in hip-hop today could pull off something like that and, yeah. get, away, and get away with it? Absolutely. And not lose any not, career none, equity whatsoever? None whatsoever. None whatsoever. Hmm. You know? None whatsoever. We we live in a world now, you know, where um, you get bashed for the slightest thing that might be considered um, hate, racist, sexist. So, um, yeah, an alpha male could could easily get away with that. And then now it's like, you got to understand, hip-hop now is respected as a legitimate music genre. Hip-hop now, at this moment right now, is even more respected as pop culture as opposed to hip-hop culture. We from an era where hip-hop artists dressed in hip-hop fashion, like B-boys or the pimps and drug dealers. Now, hip-hop artists dress like rock stars. So hip-hop artists are part of cult, pop culture now. See what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And all that's fair game in pop culture. Madonna was, was the queen of pop at that time. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? All that's pop culture. So it's like right now, no one would have a problem with that. And for all the motherfucking dudes that do something like that, you're welcome. <laughs> Did you ever feel self-conscious about dudes watching you in the nude? I mean, I'm I'm heterosexual. I don't, you know, I don't, you know, um But if some dude is like nah, I checking mean, it's, checking you out going like this. There's some dude out there, but that there's some dude did that. Probably, but that's 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 his thing. <laughs> you know? That's his thing, you know. I, I I like I like women, so I mean, you know, they ain't got nothing to do with me. Right. So I'm thinking, like, I'm putting myself out there, right? Like, if it was me, mm-hmm. I'm thinking I ain't fucking with it because I, I don't want no dude looking at me like that. And they're going to be doing it, man. They're going to be like, ah, Willie D, huh? You bust the left in the Popeyes and Bell that quick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like that's something that I don't, I'm, I don't really need to be concerned about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like it ain't like he's sitting in front of me doing nothing like that. Right. That's something he's doing in the comfort of his home. And I mean, I ain't going to lie to you. There's been many nights that I've had, you know, magazines of, of beautiful women. You know what I'm saying? And I very seriously doubt that, you know, that whoever that woman was on that page wanted me doing that about her. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's the natural order of things, though. You know, women, you know, men <laughs> being attracted to women, women being attracted to men. That's why you did Playgirl, to get the girls. Right. Did you get more girls after you did play girl? Yeah. I mean. You was a man. Women, you know, it's like that's something that women didn't have a problem with, which would make men even more upset. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It would make men even more upset. How so? If a dude is like, y'all, Kane went out and his girls say, I think the pictures look nice. <laughs> <laughs> that means, you know, fuck me and her. Would you, know? w- would you do another shoot today? Would you do a new shoot today? No, because I ain't got the body no more. <laughs> <You know? laughs> what, what, what if they told you, well, you know, we'll fix it up, man. You know, we'll... we'll... Nah, I already did it, man. You know, yeah. um, that's like, you know, um, like the cast is always coming up to me all the time talking about, I should do a remake of Ain't No Half Stepping. You know, I should do a remake of Raw. You did that. You so did I got ready and did it, it's man. It's done. Yeah. It, it cannot be touched. Yeah. Those songs are encapsulated in the history, in the annals of hip hop history. Do not touch. Yeah. Like, those songs go inside of the museum and you put a sign in front of them. Do not touch. <laughs> Look, man, 
You came out with Ain't No Half Stepping, your first single. Well, not, not your first single. Uh, your, first, your first single was Raw, right? Well, the first single was actually Just Rhyming With Biz. That was... The, 87. That then, wasn't on the album. Okay, that wasn't on your first album. No, it is. It is. Um, Wait a minute, hold on. What, what's, say, that's say, the one with Biz, the, um, the rap put motor. i start the motor. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, right. the cane in okay. the flesh. Of course okay. I'm fresh. Okay, that's, my, That was the bad. first single. Okay. But when it came out, no one knew who I was, and Biz rhymes first. Mm-hmm. So everybody thought it was Biz it's song. Busy. Right. So even though it's playing on the radio, I'm not getting no shows. I'm home broke because it, everybody, you know, they booking Biz, but nobody's right. booking me because they thinking it's a new Biz song featuring a new artist. And that's what threw me off. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So I had to keep going back to Fly Tide. It ran cold chilling. Yo, come on, I need to do something by myself. Finally, he gave, got tired of me ass, and he let me go in the studio and do something on my own. Now that that's the, and that's the main reason I started the song off saying, "Here I am, R A W." Ooh man, hey say man, uh, yeah. let me go back, bro. <sighs> oh, I'm 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 in the hood, bro. I'm at the house. Uh-huh. Song come on, first time on the radio, man. I'm like ooh wee. Go back to the drawing board, Willie. You ain't got it. <laughs> you ain't. <laughs> Go back to the drawing board. This guy is something special. Thank you, man. That Thank raw, you. bro, that's how you debut. Like, that, that's <laughs> how you put a single out. That should Thank have you, been brother. the very, very first single right there. That raw, yeah. shit. And you started You started off the album, you, you, uh, Long Live the Cane, uh, with... Ha- ain't no half stepping. And no, then, I, I think I nah, think Long Live the no, is the first song. No, it, it ain't. It's not. Oh, <laughs> ain't no half stepping is the first song. Oh, okay. Ain't no half stepping raw, and then uh, set it off. Um, shit, I can't remember. All right, but anyway, that was a good start. Like to start that album off like that. Well, I can't take the credit. Um, I, that was either Marley or Fly Tie that structured. Long Live the Cane, the, the the song set up. That wasn't me. Like yeah. that that was stuff that I didn't know nothing about. Yeah. You know? I didn't learn that until the second album. Yeah. You know? So I can't even take the credit for that. That would have either been Fly Tie or Marley Mall. Man, how brilliant of a producer is Marley Mall? Marley is 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 a legend, man. He he's he's incredible. Cause I mean, you know, um when um when Curtis Blow uh, sampled, I uh, forgot whatever song it was for If I Rule the World, and um, whatever it was that the BC Boys sampled for, was, I think it was Holy Now Hit It, I believe. Like, you know, these being those early samples from people. Marley um, figured out a way to chop samples, you know, as opposed to, because I think the first thing they had was something called a Puba song that had more sample time or something. But I mean, Marley figured out a way to chop samples. And then with him using that SP being, you know, an 8 bit machine, or, or I think the first one, like the SP was 8 bit, and I think the 12 or 1200, I think it was, or whatever, then moved up to 12 bit. But I mean, it's like the grit to the sample that was added then just change the dynamic and put this ring sound to it, this hum to it, you know. I mean, like, he he basically, you know, like, evolved a style, man, or a, 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 a sound in hip-hop. And what Marley was doing was bringing back the Park Jam thing. Because when hip-hop started, Sylvia Robinson had bands, Bands going in, replaying Good Times, you know, replaying mm-hmm. Taste the Honey, stuff like that, replaying um, Get Up and Dance by Freedom. You know, she had bands replaying records, you know, which was different than Flash, um, Africa Band by the Cool Herc, you know, break out and these dudes scratching up break beats and the MC rhyming over the break. It's a band now. And then you get to the mid '80s, where they're um, the Run DMC era. They're using the Lin drums and the DMX drum machine beats. And then Marley brought it back to the breakbeat era. 
It's just it's not a DJ scratching it up. It's a producer sampling it into a drum machine, but it's still the break beat. Did you ever do any production? Yeah. You had to, man, because look, look, bro, I've been around a lot of production, a lot of producers. And I don't know them damn uh, instruments like that. <laughs> like, like, I, I like, hey, man, give me some drums, man. I, what you using? Uh, 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 what they call it? A what was the what was the one they used to sell like really really cheap stuff with a K? Uh, what you mean? A Kawi? Uh, uh, what was it called? Uh, the, the the piano. The um, they had a little they had the little keyboard to start with a K. You're not talking about the Casio joint. Not the Casio, but but Casio is one of them. But uh, I can't remember the name. Is it a sampler or just a keyboard? It's a keyboard. Oh, um, damn. Oh, Korg. No, 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 no. Kawas. Not Kawasaki. It's, it's, it's something. I, I can't remember the name uh, of it. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but anyway, man, anyway. Because uh, back then they had the Yamahas, the Korg. Um, That's what I'm trying to actually think of, the Yamaha. Okay. That's what I was yeah. trying to think yeah. of, the Yamaha. I thought it was Star with a K, but the Yamaha. That's what I was thinking of. So did you produce any uh, songs on your actual album? Yeah. I any notables, anything that hit? Yeah. Um, the ones that I got credit for were um, Warm It Up, uh, Smooth Operator, um, the ones that I didn't get credit for would be um, Half Stepping, Raw, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. When you come out with your debut, you hit. You, How old were you? He was 22, right? He was like 22. 19. You was, came out. You came out at 19. Yeah, I was 19 when Raw dropped. You was 19 years old. Mm-hmm. And I was 20 when Half Stepping came out. Born in 68. Album came out eighty eight. Now, are you deep in? Are you get? You getting money? But are you? Are you actually getting like the M's yet? Are you in there? Nah. Where you getting some M's? Nah. I mean, I mean, uh, cumulatively. Nah, the real money. I don't think I started really like seeing real, real money until like maybe like uh, ninety three. Ninety three. Yeah. Yeah. Ninety three. But you get money and you're known and you getting you got access and options now. You're living good. You, at least you, you know, we're gonna always go get a nice car. What's the first car you went and bought? First car I bought was a Volvo. It was a Volvo. Yeah. Um, can't remember if it was a 740 or 760, but it was a Volvo. Right. A white Volvo. So then you, you. Because I wasn't getting money like 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 that. Right. I was, you know. Wasn't no 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 big check, you know. Back then, back then, I was still getting them tools and fuse, you know. You know. Tools and fuse, tools and fuse. When you put that album out, though, when when that album came out, people knew who you were. Mm -hmm. Most most people knew who you were. I mean, rich white kids didn't know, but <laughs> but black folks knew who you were. Our people knew who you were. When you go anywhere you go, now, well, yeah. Let me say this. A lot of white kids in America didn't know. Overseas? Shh. What part in overseas? In London, um, Netherlands, Germany. Norway, Finland? Um, back then, I don't think we went to Norway or Finland. Paris, yeah. The crowd would be predominantly white. white and yeah. they knew who I was and word for word, all the album cuts to stuff that I didn't even perform in America. Makes a lot of sense, man, because yeah. the first time I went to Finland, <clears throat> a dude calls, and I didn't even, I'm like, who, who the hell, who the hell know me in Finland? Like, what do they know about Willie D in Finland? And Matt Zanzala, who used to write for XXL and Murder Dog and all of these, play, uh, all of these uh, magazines, He's the one that told me the guy wanted to book me. He said, man, I, I don't know, man. I, maybe he's a damn fan. I don't know. what." I said, well, tell him to send the money. Two weeks later, dude sent the money. I was like, well, shit, I guess I'm going to Finland. <laughs> Bro, I get I get there to the airport, and it's like a good 200 people at the airport with signs. Welcome to Finland. The promoter, I spot him 
and he's standing with another guy off closer to the luggage, and he goes, he gets really excited when he sees me because I guess a lot of people don't show up when they when they send the money. <laughs> a lot of artists don't show up, so he got excited. He was like, "Oh," yeah. and I say, "Hey, man, y'all ain't have to do all of this, man." He said, "I don't know the motherfuckers. They heard that you were coming, and they just came to the airport." I was like, "Damn, got that, bro." Sold out. It was a venue called the Virgin Club, and it was the size of the House of Blues. Okay. And so, you know, it held about two 2,000 people. Sold out. Um, I remember talking to the editor of the biggest magazine in Finland. And, you know, usually the editor don't interview you, you know, unless it's a small magazine or whatever but this guy this magazine was big mm -hmm. and it, you know and he was like Willie D you know you are in concert the same night as 50 cent and I said yeah I heard he said yeah but you have nothing to worry about they're coming to see 50 because he's hot they're coming to see you because you are a legend I still didn't catch my snare I like this motherfucker just talking you know man I got there and people was like going crazy so i get it brother yeah. overseas oh man yeah you got to go over there you got to see the love you got, oh, and, yeah. you, and you got to go overseas anyway so you can know that the world does not revolve around the united states that's that's, exactly. that's more exactly. to the world than the united states i totally agree yes sir man where were you when you found out that biz marquis died um i was in my kitchen you got a phone call? Uh, no, I think I saw it on, um, no, somebody texted me. Yeah, yeah, somebody texted me saying, rest in peace, biz. And um, I called Cool V, his DJ, and he said, yeah, yeah, he just passed a little while ago. Yeah. Now, I heard that you and Big... You know, you you and Biz were tight, but you know, were y'all were y'all really tight like that? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, there would be no Kane without Biz. I had you know um, performed so many places, opened up for so many people, um, sent demos to I don't know how many different labels. And nobody paid me no attention, you know. And this is somebody that I, you know, walked up to in the street and asked for a battle. And after we battled, he's like, yo, you dope, man. You need to get down with me. I'll be doing shows in the Bronx, Long Island, Manhattan. And I guarantee you, if you get down with me, I'm going to get you a record deal one day. And he kept his word. You know, I got down with him, and uh, we was doing shows for these du promoters called Mike and Dave. We used to get, like, $50 a show, you know. And um, eventually, you know, he got on. And then he came back and was like, um, I want to do this song. Well, he asked me to write Make the Music, but I, I, I said something ignorant. And he did stop coming around. <laughs> <laughs> and he ended up, you know, doing the song, came out, it blew up. Then he came back and was like, um, I want to use the Nobody Beats the Wiz um, um, slogan, but saying Nobody Beats the Biz. And I got this rap style that I want to do. I want it to just be like, a zuka 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 zian, a zuka 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 pian, and I just wanted to be like that. And I, this time I wasn't gonna mess up, so I did what he told me to do. And right after that, he took me on the road with him. And I think the following year, he got me signed to Coach Ellen. Go back to what you said. That was crazy. <laughs> the first time. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, when we was rocking together trying to get on, um, it was the type of thing where um, Biz would beatbox. He'd come out, beatbox, then call me up on stage. He'd beatbox, and I would rhyme. And then um, afterwards, you know, Cool V, 
throw something on. And we both rhyme to a beat then. But I would come up rhyming to him beatboxing. So when he came to me and said he wanted me to write this song called Make the Music with His Mouth, I was like, Tom, um, don't you mean you want me to write a song for me, for me <laughs> to tell you to make the music with your mouth? And then, then you make the music with your mouth? Because I'm the one that just rapping. You beatboxing. And I remember his exact words. Okay, Kane. <laughs> like, I ain't seen that motherfucker in the war. <laughs> yeah. Was he always a man of few words? Uh, Hell no. Okay, so when he get going, he can he go. Nah, it was one type of things where that particular day he just knew he wasn't gonna get his way. He knew he wasn't. So, so he who ended up writing the song? I don't know. To this day, I don't know. I remember the first time uh, I went to Marley House. That was the day he was supposed to record Nobody Beats the Biz. And uh, Marley wouldn't let me in. And he was like, your biz in here. I don't know what to tell you, money. All right, man. So I was like, well, look, these are the words to the song he's supposed to do today. And he was like, you be writing biz shit? I was like, I wrote that. And you know, he asked me how it go. And I said a little bit of it, and he took the chain off the door and was like, yo, you rhyme too? <laughs> come come in. Let me hear something. And I spit a verse for him. And he was like, yo, you want to work on something? And we worked on something, you know. Man, that's a movie, bro. That is that is a scene in a movie. <laughs> he opened the door and have the chain on that. He ain't there. Yeah. You pass him the, uh, it just seemed like something that was scripted. You pass him the, the, the music. At the sheet of music, and he grabs it. Yo, you wrote this. You ready for beer? Oh, come on in. Yeah, but when I came, once I came inside, one of the first things Molly asked me was, "Did you write make the music for him?" I was like, "Nah." Who wrote the vapors? I did. Yeah. 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 Um, it's like I remember when I first heard him use the word. There was a girl in high school that I used to try to holler at, they wouldn't give me no rhythm. But now, you know, I'm rocking with biz. You know, make the music, um, nobody beats the biz, they out, they popping. And I'm rocking with them. You know, all these shows, people know I'm rocking with them. You know, got a little blingage now too, you know, so now she, you know, she, 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 she giving me rhythm. And Biz, me and her walking through the Albee Square Mall, and Biz walking behind us, you know, talk about uh, Batman and Robin with Cape Crusaders, this one here, caught for vapors. And he just kept saying stupid shit like that, you know, <laughs> just like Superman jump over skyscrapers, this one here, caught the vapors. And he, he just kept saying stupid shit like that. <coughs> so... <clears throat> At the end, I told, you know, I'm like, you know, all right, well, yo, you know, um, I hit you, you know, we won't roll up to the quarters this weekend, whatever, boom, boom, boom. She leave. She caught the vapors. <laughs> he said this shit again. Uh -huh. I'm like, what the fuck is you talking about? <laughs> and then he started explaining. He's like, yo, we got to do a song. We got to do a song on that. Then a couple of days later, he hit me. <clears throat> like, I got it. We going to talk about people that fronted on us back in the days and how they ended up catching the vapors. You know, and um, he told me about the situation with Cool V, and then Cool V filled in all the blanks. He told me about the Swan, UPS, Swan filled in all the blanks, and then Biz was like, yo, remember when you was telling me that story, you know, about your relative, whoop -de -whoop -de -whoop -de -whoop? you should talk about that. It's like, so was that the first time you heard the word vapors? Like somebody that day in the that? mall when I was talking to the girl. Did, did, did Biz ever share with you where he got it from? Nah, nah. But I mean, Biz always made up words. Right. Like that was his thing. He would always make up words. Like you, like Biz had his own way of speaking. You know, dookie deaf. <laughs> you know? That shit is the dookie death, you know. Like and and I've like 
for stink breath. I, like he had so many different words for stink, <laughs> like Biz just made up words. So I just assume it was one of his, you know, one of his words. Man, I know Biz was working, man, but every time I would see Biz performing like DJing, mm -hmm. very few words, very few words. Like he, he would, he wouldn't even hardly like talk on the mic. I mean, and I know he could, he could run it if he wanted to. But he just kind of have his head down and doing like, you know, just doing his DJ. I mean, he could smoke the crowd. Yeah. Easy. I mean, he talk on the mic to set up the next record sometimes, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I would I would, I would, would seldom hear him do that, though, because I, I remember watching him a couple times, and he went like, I don't know, shoot, it was probably like 20 minutes with not saying anything. Well, maybe he was on one that day. I don't know. Mm. But, yeah. So, so... Where are you right now with the movie thing? Do not tell me you're not doing any more movies, man, because you got it. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, I'm getting ready to start filming um, one next week. Is that right? See, yeah. I'm, see, man, I'm on, the, I'm on the inside, man. See, I know what be going on, man. I'm like, man, yeah. it's, it's a natural thing for you, bro. Like, you got it. Thank you, man. Thank yeah, you, you so got, much, man. You got that. Hey, where did you get your calm demeanor from? I get my calm demeanor from. Yeah, I, did you? Did you? Did, did is this just something that came to you naturally, or did you yeah, see somebody probably, and say nah, like, "Yeah, that's cool, dude. Nah, I think I'm gonna be like that." Nah, I, I think that's just just the way I am. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, I'm like, as I t told you about my parents and driving Seville's with us, but I mean, I'm from the hood for real, Willie. Like for real, for real. I'm from the heart of Bed Stuy. I'm like from the hood, for real. I grew up around a lot of grimies, a lot of grimies. And, you know, you watching how people move and things they do, it's like, you know, to stay alert, to stay safe, you know, you got to move different. And that's always been the type of dude I've always been. You know, like, I'm not doing that dumb shit. I don't want no part of that. You know, just, just knowing, you know, that, you know, this ain't it. You once know. you once you got on, did anybody ever try to extort you? Mm -mm. Go yeah. out in the hood, say, "Hey man, you know you owe me." Mm -mm. I gave nah. you a CD one day. Huh? Gave you a CD one day. Mm -mm. You know how they do. <laughs> nah, the only person that used to drive me, me crazy me was my man Joe from around the corner. He every time he see me, he come pull up, talking about um. Uh, I still got his seven grandmasters tape. I never returned his seven grandmasters tape when I bought it. Yeah. <laughs> he was only supposed to say some crazy shit like that, man. But uh In your opinion, man, who who is carrying the torch for hip hop right now in this current generation? Hmm. <sighs> man, you know, it's it's so hard to say, man, because um there's so many different um, forms of hip hop. And there's something crazy about that, which I'll explain later. Um, it's like you got um, regular hip hop, you got pop hip hop, you got drill music. There's so many different forms, so in each one, has, you know, their own leader, you know? So it, it's so hard to really say because there's so many different forms of hip-hop. And as I said, I'll, I'll explain in a minute, it's like, that's nothing new, you know? That's nothing new. You know, you guys and um, UGK, y'all had a Midwest style. Dre, Snoop. They had a West Coast style, you know what I'm saying? Me, KRS, Rakim, we had a New York style, you know? The Brat, no, 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 um, uh, uh, was Outkast, they had a Southern style. So it's, it's not like it's never happened before. But the difference is hip-hop fans listen to all that. 
They liked what was coming from the Midwest from y'all. They liked what was coming from the West Coast from Dre and Snoop. They liked what was coming from New York from me, Rakim. They liked what was coming from the South, from the Brat and Outkast. Now it's like drill is what it is. This pop hip hop is what it is, you know. Um, the um, this style of hip hop is what it is, and they don't fuck with the other ones, you know. You know we from the south, right? We represent the south. We don't represent the Midwest. Okay. <laughs> well, my apologies, but you know, from we, the you know, south, at, man. We look, we, south. We, yeah, we we look at we look at um, Texas as you know Midwest, but I mean you know we're in the middle. Yeah, but now we, listen, we're in the middle, but we're not. This in the is West. what you're doing. If you say south, then yeah, damn it, it's south. Yeah, it's, I can't. I can't name south, your sound, man. It's all south, man. Yeah. It's South. Yeah, if you say South, then it's South. I can't name your sound. My apologies. Well, yeah. where, 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 are we, where are we going? To, like, you know, what do you think the trajectory is of hip-hop, though? You know, do you, do you, do you see things, like, improving? Do you, th- do you see a, 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 a new legion of, of hip-hoppers out there taking a the torch and saying, we're going to take this thing to the next level and make it better than what it is right now? Or do you think that we're on a decline? I personally want to believe that it's improving. Right now, when I look at hip-hop and see what's happening with drill music and all these pills, it reminds me of the disco era, you know, where um, drugs and music were kind of united, you know. It reminds me of that. And as much as I love disco, love disco, it it, it was a, it was a cleansing period. Mm. It was a cleansing period for music. And after it went away, you know, um, from Shalimar, yeah, funk, the funk came, yeah, from Shalimar, and all all the way on up to the Mary J. Um, R. Kelly and uh, whoever else, you know, that, that, you know, it's like, you know, but that disco era was a cleansing era. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I think that that's what's happening right now. I think that it's going through a cleansing era. But what needs to happen is that one artist need to really understand, that one young person need to understand how to be, make good music, have an amazing stage show. Don't just stand there jumping up and down with fireworks and a big-ass LED screen behind you. Have an amazing stage show. Dress fly. And be a smooth motherfucker. Be a fly dude or a fly um, young lady, you know? Yeah, you got like, that. Yeah, and- cover all those grounds. We need that person. We need that person to set that 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 tone, you know. These are traits that I feel like you know, um, you know, there were artists that you know had this, you know, and they s- stood apart from others. And we need that type of artist today. I'm with you, bro. I'm with you, and that's coming from somebody who has put the work in, and who has the respect from his peers. I can tell you right now, like, one of the greatest, I think, uh, signs of a of a good uh, artist is when that artist is respected by his own peers. Mm-hmm. You know, you that dude. Thank you for coming on the show, man. My pleasure, brother. Man, man, Big Daddy Kane is in the building, y'all. No more talk. My guy. Much yeah. respect. This is beautiful.